All right, so now that we know what addition is, we can talk about how to add. And this is something that I think most people are uh, pretty good with, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it, but we do wanna come up with, uh, or I do wanna show you guys a few algorithms that are out there for adding. And algorithms are just, you could think of it as um, a series of steps that tells you how to do something. It's just a mathematical way of saying a series of steps. And the basic idea for all of these, in some sense, same change is a little bit different. It's not quite um, the same, but it's mostly the same. But we're going to add our place values separately, and usually from right to left, so smallest to largest. And we'll just carry when we need to. So partial addition, this is one where we just, it's as simple as it gets. We're going to have a line for our ones place value when we add it, and then our tens, and then our hundreds. Since that's all we have here, we have ones, tens, and hundreds. We're just going to write everything on separate lines. Well, 8 plus 4 is 12. So we'll write that there. So we have 12 ones. We keep everything in line under the ones column. Now that we did that, let's add our tens. Three tens plus seven tens is 10 tens. So there is our tens. We keep everything in line under the tens column since we're adding up the tens. And finally, hundreds. Well, we just have 100 and 100 is one sorry 100 and zero hundreds is 100 so there's our hundreds and I didn't leave myself enough room so I'll just squeeze this in but I don't think it's anything particularly difficult we have let's add our ones here now so here we have two ones we have one ten and two hundred so the final answer is of course 212 we're just adding each place value separately. Now, actually I'll erase this and just give myself a little more room. Since we need just slightly more room, I'll do the exact same problem. And this is the standard algorithm. This is the way that I'm sure the bulk of you guys add numbers. So if you were to add these, I'm sure you would do the same thing. 8 plus 4 is 12, carry your 1. 1 plus 3 plus 7 is 11, put down your 1, carry your 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So what's going on here? Well, of course we got the same answer as partial addition, except we did it in fewer steps in some sense. We were fewer things to write down here. And you can kind of see... We're just kind of encapsulating what's going on in partial addition. We're encapsulating that into carries above here. So you can see, hey, this carried one here when we wrote down 12. That's just that guy in the standard algorithm. And when we said 3 plus 7 is 10, so the 10 tens, that one, that's that guy. So that's all that's happening here. There's nothing particularly daunting or hard. Um, all we're doing is writing our carries in different places. Here we wrote them kind of explicitly underneath the calculation and then we added at, at the end. But here this saves a lot of space. We don't need a separate lines. You could imagine if we had kind of six digit numbers we would need six separate lines here instead of three so um this isn't too bad here we're saving a lot of space we're just carrying as we go the same change algorithm is pretty cool we'll talk about this one in a second but i'm going to give you an even easier problem this one is quite easy but i'll give you an easier one what is 99 plus 
238. Now, I bet most of you didn't do this. This is what you didn't do. You didn't go 238 plus 99 and then did that addition there. What you probably did is you said, well, this is one away from 100. So if I add one to this, I can subtract one to that, and then it's like 100 plus 237 is 337. I'm sure a bunch of people in your mind did this to get 337. So what we did is we changed the problem. That's why it's called same change. So we changed this problem by adding one to that number to make it nice and round so we can deal with it and subtracting one from this number. So we get 100 plus 237. As of course, 337. All right, doing the same idea. Actually, I'm going to change this a little bit, make it just slightly harder, but only slightly, only very slightly. 298 is too close to that example. Let's do 288. Using the idea of same change, like we did over here, see if you guys can figure out what this sum is. You can add and subtract something from both numbers to make your calculation a little bit easier. So pause the video now and try that. Okay, so hopefully you guys could see that if you add 12 to the top number, you get 300. So there's lots of zeros there. That's kind of the key. Get as many zeros as possible around because it's easy to add zeros. Zeros do nothing. And then finally, we're going to subtract 12 from the second number to keep things balanced. If we add 12, we must subtract 12 in order to keep the answer the same. So 288 plus 12 is 300, and 421 minus 12 is 409. And now we can add these quite easy. This is 709. Nine. So you can see that adding and subtracting something uh, gives you the same answer as long as you're adding and subtracting the same thing from both numbers. Um, and this is more useful in some sense you doing mental math than it is kind of on paper. If you were to give me these two numbers um, mentally, it would be much easier to add them adding 12 to this, subtracting 12 to this, and then it would kind of obviously be uh, 709. Though you could use, on paper, you could use the standard algorithm pretty easily for stuff like this. We'll talk about the same change when it comes to subtraction in a little bit as well. All right, I just want to talk about carries and the standard algorithm in a little bit of detail here, just to make sure we know what's happening. Remember, we're adding each place value separately from right to left, and we're regrouping as we need. That's the key bit. So let's add our ones first. Six ones plus eight ones is, of course, 14 ones. But whenever we have 10 of something, since we always work in base 10, unless we're doing things with special bases, which we will in a little bit, but in general um, life, we're working in base 10, so whenever we have 10 of something, we regroup 10 of it to one of the next place value. So here we have 6 plus 8 is 14. Do I have 10 of something? I do. So I'm going to take 10 of those, regroup them to one of the next place value, which is a 10. So this is, of course, 10 ones regrouped. as 110 and there are four ones left over and now let's add our tens we have one plus seven is eight plus four is twelve we have twelve tens do we have ten of something do we ha have enough to regroup we do we regroup ten of those tens 
to make 100. So this is 10 tens grouped as 100. And the same idea applies for all other place values as well. And finally, we have 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 9 is 14. Oh, sorry, I put, didn't put my 2 down here, but this was 14. We have enough to regroup. So usually we don't put the carry up here, we just put the 1, the 1,000 um, here, the last number. If there's nothing more to add, we just kind of put whatever the carry is down here, of course. And we have 4 here. And this is, this 1,000 came from 10 hundreds. Remember, we had 14 hundreds here. 14 hundreds here. So we had enough to regroup. So this is 10 hundreds grouped as 1,000. We always regroup when we can. And that's how the carries work for the uh, standard addition algorithm. All right, let's add numbers in different bases now. There's nothing special about base 10. We can add numbers that are in base 5 or base 6 or base 12 or base 3, whatever we like. But here's a base 5 example. Remember, base 5 means we regroup when we have 5 of something. So let's add these. Let's put them in a vertical line, just as usual. One, I'll do it in black actually. One, four, two, base five, plus three, one, four. And this is all base five. Okay. So let's add our ones place value. Two plus four is six. Remember, we're in base five, so we regroup when we have five of something. A lot of students will just put a six down here. But remember, that six isn't even a digit in base five. There's only five digits, base five. And they are, of course, zero, one, two, three, and four. And these are your possible remainders when you divide by five, of course. You can think of it like that as well. So 6 isn't a possibility because we can regroup. So since we can regroup, we can never write down a 6. It just does not exist for us, base 5. These are the only numbers that do. But 2 plus 4 is 6. We have 5 of something, so we can regroup 5 of those 1s to 1, 5. And we have 1 left over. 5 plus 1, 1, 5 plus 1 is 6. Okay, so that's where that comes from. Now, let's look at this. Let's do our 5's place, our long's place. We have 1 plus 4 is 5 plus 1 is 6. So this is the same idea. We have enough to regroup. We take 5 of those 6, regroup to the next place value, the 5 squared's place value, or the 25's place value. And we had 6, so it's 5. Remember, this is 5 fives plus 1 5 remaining gives us 6 fives. Here are our 6 fives. 1 5 plus 4 fives plus 1 5 is 6 fives. Here's 5 of those fives regrouped as 1 square, 1 25. And here's the other 5 to make 6. Finally, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 5. Do we have 5 of something? We do. So we can regroup. We take those 5 squares and we regroup them to 1 cube. So there's our cube. And we used all 5, so we have none left over. So that's how to add these two numbers, base 5. There's nothing particularly special about it. Let me give you one to try to make sure you understand this. And then we'll do it to check that you've got the correct answer. So try this one. Let's do, let's do base 12, in fact. 
Let's do two of them. So the first one will be kind of a short one. Let's do a9 plus 4, 4. This is base 12. And the second one will be a little bit longer. Let's have a four-digit number. Let's do 30B7 plus Ace9A9. And this is base 12. So try both of these. Remember, we're not allowed to regroup until we have 12 of something in base 12. 12. If we have 10 or 11, we have to represent we have 10 of something with the letter A and 11 of something with the letter, with the letter B. So give that a go. Okay, now that we're back, let's go ahead and do this. So let's do the first question here. Let's do the ones place value. Nine ones plus four ones is 13 ones. Well, do we have enough to regroup? How many do we need to regroup? Well, it's there. It tells us. 12. We need 12 to regroup. We have 13 ones. We can regroup 12 of those to the next place value. So this is 112, and we have one left over. We had 13 ones here. 9 plus 4 is 13. 12 of them are here in that 112, and the other one is here to make 13. Okay, let's keep going. So we have 1, 12, 10 12s. Remember, A stands for 10, so that's 1 plus 10 is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15. So we have 15 12s here. 1 plus 10 plus 4 is 15 12s. We ask ourselves, do we have enough to regroup? We do. We need 12. We have 12. So I'm going to regroup 12 of them to the next place value, the squared place value. The 12 squareds are 144s. We used 12. We had 15. So there are three left over. So remember here, we had 15 12s. Here are 12 of those 12s grouped as one 12 squared. So there's 12. And then there were three left over, which makes 15. So it's the exact same idea as regular old addition. And then finally, let's try this one. So we have 7 plus 9 is 16. 16 is 12 or more, so we have enough to regroup. We regroup 12 of those. 16 minus 12, because we grouped those 12, is 4. There's 4 left over. So here's 12 plus 4 is 16. Okay, now we have 1 plus 11 is 12, plus 10 is 22. Do we have enough to regroup? We do indeed. We need 12, we have 12. So we regroup 12 of those 12s, 12 of those long pieces, to 1, 144, or 1 square. So we do that. And how many do we have left over? We had 22. We regrouped 12. So there are 10 left over. Remember, I can't write. I'm going to write this and then erase it. I can't write this. Because that doesn't mean 10 in base 12. It's hard to get out of the practice of writing 1, 0 to mean 10. But... You have to be careful when you're in base 12. Remember, A means 10 things in base 12. 1, 0 is 12. 1, 12, no 1s. Remember, everything is grouped in 12s. So we carried our, remember, we had 22 uh, 12s here. Here's 12 of our 12s. So there's 10 left. So we'll put 10 down here. Then we have 1 plus 0 plus 9 is 10. Do we have enough to regroup? We don't. Remember, we need 12 to regroup. We only have 10 things. So we just write down that we have 10. We have 10 squares or 10 144s. 
let's look at the cubes now. So with the cubes, we have 3 plus 8 is 11 cubes, or 11 12 cubes, which is 17 28. So we have 11 of those guys. We don't have enough to regroup. We need 12 to regroup. So we just write down that we have 11. And our symbol for 11 is B. So hopefully that was helpful for trying addition um, in other bases.